Welcome to the State of Survival Medieval Dynasties 2.0 patch, which is commonly being called the Co-op Patch, has released, and it's here. So let's dive into the launch and see what the game has to offer. Releasing on Steam is an early access game. Medieval Dynasty blew all of our expectations as a successor to Farmer's Dynasty as well as Lumberjack Dynasty. Three years later, an overhaul to the entire title, a new map, and a highly requested feature that was unplanned at out the release of the alpha has been a resounding success. Dump, I never really got the chance to see you play much Medieval Dynasty, but I was super excited to get into co-op with you. As you know, I enjoy the game very much. But knowing Medieval Dynasty as the game it was, did you find what they've added to the game since you've watched me play it enjoyable? Yes, a lot of things impressed me as well as didn't impress me as much as I thought they would, but I know the update just released, so I'm excited for its future. Uh, I really enjoyed the co-op update because one of the things I will iterate is that, I said this at the very end of our stream last time, is that its progression felt well-balanced. And I know that you had Pacific settings set more extreme because that's how you play, but even without those, I still feel like we still would have been relying upon each other to build, work together, and stuff like that. It almost felt better progression than when we did some Goku Dynasty, which was really refreshing to feel because I don't want all their game titles to feel the same when it comes to co-op. Because uh, I know Toplet is the producer of both. Different game companies, of course. Uh, but still, like I really enjoyed that situation. I agree. And, and to that point, what I... They had an interesting approach because they always told us in the early days of the alpha, no, there will not be multiplayer. No, that's not what we do with our dynasty games. No, no. And then it was like, well, maybe. Well, maybe. And then, you know, after 1.0 release, they're like, guess what? There's going to be co-op. Here's when we're planning on releasing it. And it did get pushed back because they asked the community what they like. And it was, I just found the entire update a very beautiful update. The map was great. It was large. Um, it was, the cities were definitely more diverse. It wasn't just a carbon copy of every other city. But I will admit I was concerned with how Sengoku Dynasty's co-op, how that felt. I thought the Medieval Dynasty was just going to copy the co-op mechanics in it and just port it over, uh, such as icons above your head, icons above your enemies. Um, it was already a completed game, so I didn't really see them investing much into it. But Rendered Cube really knocked it out of the park with their character customization, their emoting that you could do to one another, and just the economic balance of the map, which is why we needed a new map. Friendly Fire, for example, is huge. And I think yeah. that is just... That I was not expecting. I was not expecting there to be Friendly Fire. But I love that there is... Because if you ever wanted to play a nomadic run through a two v two, it would be so funny, so funny. But I, I was not disappointed knowing that this is just two point oh, and they also have a roadmap for this new version, including adding weapons, uh, armed bandits like from a military, uh, a dynastic crest that you can modify on your own, so you can create your own shield of arms, and I. I'm looking forward to what they bring to the game for sure. Um, but the biggest focus on it was the new map. It required a new map to balance out resources in space. But how did you like the Oxbow when you woke up from your little medical bed? What was your first impression of the new map? Uh, my first impressions of the new map was it was definitely different, but I felt like when we're going through the wilderness and everything else, I definitely could feel the resources being more well allocated across the map. Um, like, there, where we decided to originally settle, uh, I would say that there were trees, but the trees were far more sparsely spaced than I had previously experienced in other parts of the Oxford map, where in the original map they put out uh, in the Dynasty outside of the co-op was it felt like the tree spacing was always consistent across the entire map um so you always had pretty dense forests but on oxford uh the resources being the trees as well as the rocks and things we find 
felt like they were placed appropriately. So it would reward people for actually exploring because in a cooperative thing, you might want somebody to go get more wood, but maybe they want to be more efficient. So they'll go uh, start uh, uh, cutting down trees in the more densely packed wood area. But maybe there's not the same kind of uh, mushrooms they need there, so they have to go to the birchwood forest to get the right, right kind of mushrooms. I love that kind of dynamicness in a cooperative uh, map, and Oxford did not disappoint. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that was one of our concerns with needing a new map. The valley was very casual. It was no matter where you chose to build your base, as long as you built it around resources, there was a clay pit nearby. There was some sort of maybe not a mine, but there was a place to put an extraction shed. There was definitely trees in most of the map, fresh drinking water. No matter where you built, you had access to most resources you needed in your backyard. And even when you were done building your town, it was maybe 100 feet from all the other towns because how small the map was. Um, but this map, they even make a point of it in the dialogue to tell you that the towns are not equal. Um, some of the towns specialize in certain things, and also the towns hate each other, which is kind of really nice. Well, what really got me was you start off in this breathtaking new village, the Castellan's town, and it really does depict the seat of wealth and power in the Oxbow. And they finally included something that we've all been asking for for co-op, a bailey, some sort of actual fort for the Castellan. Towers. I mean, this starting town by Stovia makes you really think that this would be hard to besiege. It's built in a strategic place, has stakes all around. It even has channels to get rid of the poo water and, and the oh, yeah, runoff of that. that. Yeah, and it's, of course, there's no poo water in the game, but the fact that they actually looked at medieval life was like, there would be poo water runoffs, trenches from the homes where everybody would dump their buckets that would run off into the surrounding areas. Um, it's just a nice level of detail that I think the valley was definitely missing. But, um, oh my God, <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> uh, oh, I I'm just waiting for you at. to bring it up. I'm going to. <laughs> my favorite thing is the pop culture references in this game are on point. One of the NPCs is passing by and he makes a comment and goes, well, at least with this world, you'll enjoy yourself. So you won't have to worry about any two hour limits. I was like, oh, what? Like, that's a that's a prodded theme. The kids, <laughs> the kids are so funny. One of them went, what a love a dub dub. And then another one was like, come on, man. I mean, Ka ha. It's so funny that they're bringing all this pop culture into it that I love. Kamehameha, stop me in my tracks. I'm like, wait, wait, what, what did it just? <laughs> I didn't think I needed that in this game. Here I was like, I wanted to feel like a medieval world. And then they're like, Kamehameha. And I'm like, ah, ha, 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 yay. Like, cracked me up. But uh, Mother Nature has always been in the backseat in the valley for medieval dynasty. The weather elements didn't really affect you much. The animals weren't a big deal, but how has Mother Nature provided you with either a worse or more worthwhile experience? I would have to say that I did experience the temperatures pretty badly. Like, we logged in the second time us playing, and my guy's all like, man, I'm overheating. And, like, I literally stripped down to my shorty shorts, and I, like, even jumping in the water, my guy was still like, I'm overheating. So I was constantly running to get water. I was constantly having to eat more, a little bit more food. Like, it was not easy. And then, like, I looked at the clothing, and it was all like, this protects you this much from uh, heat. I'm like, okay, so it's actually probably better to wear clothes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the previous game, to, to your point about the weather... Colder summer never really affected you. I had channel points that would make me get naked in the winter and I was fine. I'd lose a little bit of health, but you know, nothing that a torch couldn't fix. It wasn't Remember until that, that summer. Yeah, there you go. It wasn't until that summer that we started to overheat and it was draining our water as well as our health and burning our stamina. I was like, wow, that's a cool heat mechanic. And then in the fall, we were like, finally, we get to put our clothes back on and it rained. And just watching us freeze and having to hold our torches for warmth, it wasn't even winter yet. 
it immediately changed our priority to, well, we can't make our own clothes because we don't have a farm worth beans. We don't even have the buildings necessary to craft these. We had to go find ways to peddle money, whether it's crafting or the stuff that we could and sending our person who is good with diplomacy in to be like, sup shop keeps and buy the clothes for us because it was just insane how important it was, but also very appropriate for the setting. And uh, with your point about animals, the deer travel in herds now. Bears don't just spawn outside caves. They wander. Or they have little areas that they spawn in, sometimes even ruined buildings. The boars are just mm -hmm. as deadly as you'd expect. And the oh, yeah. wolves. The wolves, the wolves that Dimension found that hang out in dens in numbers of anywhere between four to, he claims, ten. Which is just insane. Uh, and I did end up finding that cave. There were a lot. <laughs> dang, um, dang, dang, dang. But what I love about it is in the previous version in the valley, you killed an animal and you skinned them and you got the leather and you got the, the meat and you were done, right? But in this one, they've added tanning racks and laundry station. They've really expanded the process from hunting an animal to processing all the byproduct from the animal. And you can't master everything. You really mm -hmm. do require one person to be the hunter, one person to be the tanner and the and the town builder, the other person to be the diplomat. And you really can't just master every skill because it would take too long and you need to get up and running immediately. So you have to divvy out tasks, which I really like. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. You know, speaking of possible funny moments from the bear, the bear destroyed you. And then me and I mentioned we're shooting arrows and throwing spears at it. While the bear, I'm pretty sure this may be a bug, or maybe not, if they intended it, that's awesome. The bear played with your body, smacking it around like a ball between hands, like da 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 Like, we watched it for like a good minute while we were trying to take it on, and it didn't care about us. It was all like, you threw four spears into me, and there's six arrows now sticking out of my back, but I'm going to get with you guys in just a minute. I'm not done with this guy. Like, and then it turned on us, and like, we barely took it out, like... I think it almost killed uh, Dimension. Like, it just was strong as heck. So, yeah, uh, I think that it was a lot of fun. How how have they adapted the RPG mechanics that you saw in single player to make the game fun, a fun co-op adventure title with combat and progression and such? I would have to reference us running to a village and trying to get our, rep our Dynasty reputation up uh, so we could possibly, uh, recruit some people. And we did a quest where this guy literally was being kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, pansy about somebody else having similar house structure to him. <laughs> um, and we spent a good, like, I don't know, all three of us, me, you, Dimension, uh, about 15 minutes, like, literally going, are there daisies in this thing? No, 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 I think, I think, I think they're, uh, you know, uh, you know, poppies. No, 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 they're daisies. Oh, no, they're poppies. Oh, well, where is the fur next to the campfire on his house? Oh, uh, it looks like it's a little bit above. Is it a bear? Oh, I don't know what a bear looks like, girl. Oh, I'm gonna go look. But, like, that is kind of the mechanics I want to see RPG-wise from a game that allows co-op. I want us to work together to do situations. Do I want every quest to require us to work together? No, mm -hmm. but when we have quests like that, which, by the way, rewarded us very handsomely with yeah. that um, reputation, um, I want it to be a group effort. Like, if I had to do that quest by myself, it might have taken me probably like 60 minutes. I may have given up. I may have been like, you know what? Screw you, dude. Get over yourself. And who cares if the guy's house is similar to yours? Which we did find out that he did admire the guy, so he wasn't totally unfounded. I. That's one of the things I liked about that quest that it took all of us to kind of figure it out. And it wasn't a fetch quest. It was something unique because usually it's fetch or kill quests with RPGs. This was something new, but at the same time, it was annoying. And if they didn't reward us very well, I would have had something else to say about it, but seeing the reward that we got at the end of it, the huge dynasty reputation boost, I'm like, man, I'm so glad we spent the time doing that. I didn't feel like we wasted our time when we got that much of a boost. And just so you guys know in chat, what we're, or for our viewers, what we're talking about is that occasionally when you do quests, you get anywhere between 50 to 150 dynasty points, 
we got 300 for that quest alone and the houses were literally across the street from one another so hats off to the devs for knowing that was an obnoxious quest but also it's nice to see the npcs of a medieval village having petty disputes and it's not always <laughs> life and death it's kind of refreshing uh but one of the things i noticed that i loved a lot is that the skill progression because you get perks that have up your abilities it's much slower and they've manipulated some of the skills that you can unlock so that it's more beneficial to the co-op play that it takes longer to level means that you can't just be a master of everything you really have to specialize which encourages a village role and i really enjoy that um i think combat is a lot more challenging I was concerned that the boars would be really stupid and only go after one target, but they they would hit one of us, then spin around and smack another. It was just absolutely nuts. But the one thing I was yeah. concerned about was gear fear. What happens if you respawn when you die? Well, you spawn with a quarter percent of your health, and it's not exactly easy to regain health in that game, which means you're going to have to rely on herbalism and collecting flowers and making potions and I really do appreciate the fact that they thought about the co-op scope and what it would mean to their basic format. Did you have any final thoughts on our co-op experience with the game? Uh, if you honestly, I'll just go out and say, if you've been on the fence about Medieval Dynasty and have been and really enjoy playing with either your friends, stream, stream buddies, or even just your significant other brothers and sisters, I think now is the time to really give it a try. And say. for those of you who aren't excited about co-op, you could still play single player on the Oxbow map, and it kind of like considers that you're playing by yourself. Mm -hmm. So so you won't have the experience robbed from you if you decide to go it alone. You can also play single player, and then other people can join later on. It's great. We had a community question. Co-op was not a planned feature originally, but was frequently asked for by the community. Did breaking the typical dynasty model of play open new doors for toplets as well as their development teams but that's all we have for this episode of state of survival thank you all so much for stopping by and keep thriving bye 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 folks <laughs>